the head to toe examination is useful in not only the trauma patient, but it can be used to cover all of our bases on a medical patient. Because in some cases, they may have multiple complaints and we'll have to check multiple body systems. And by doing a detailed head to toe exam, we're basically checking the entire body system. For example, if they complain, a medical patient complains of a type of headache or a neurological type of emergency or complaint, we'd like to deploy or in, 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 uh, go through a neurological assessment. The neurological assessment would consist of asking the patient their orientation questions, their name, date, and place. Uh, we use this as oriented times three, name, date, and place. Uh, if they're unable to identify the place, then it would be oriented times two and so forth, and we just go back. If they're unaware of their name, then it would be oriented times zero and not, you know. So we'd start up at the hand again, and you do pupillary check by having them look directly up at your nose or fork somewhere else so that when you shine the light in on the corners of the eyes, that it doesn't blind them. At that time, you're checking for pupillary response that it should constrict with the light, and that it accommodates when the light is stimulated on this side of the eye, that this side, the opposite eye, you see also constriction going on. You'd have them follow your finger, keep their head straight, and you'd move the eyes. Follow my finger with just your eyes and to check their ocular movement. This is testing <coughs> their ocular motor and some of their cranial nerves as well as their optic nerve. So we're testing their cranial nerves already. Now, as we look at their face, <coughs> we're looking at their facial expression. You can have them smile for us, you can have them kind of grin or actually bite down really tight so that we can check to see if the muscles, when they constrict their uh, face or grin or, or uh, smile or grimace or they close their eyes really tight, we're going to see whether the facial muscles are symmetrical and we can try to even open their eyes or, or try to open their jaw when they're biting down when we ask them to clench your jaw really tight because we're checking the facial muscles and that could be <laughs> your cranial nerve uh, seven but also then when you touch you're also testing the cranial nerve five. <clears throat> as we move across back to the pupils, as we did the pupils going up, down, side, side, we also tested our cranial nerves four and six. <clears throat> we come down towards the, the ears, and as we've been asking them to talk to us <clears throat> and to listen, they're able to hear us, and so we're gonna say grossly that their uh, cranial nerve uh, <clears throat> eight is grossly intact, and they're able to follow commands. Now I'll look in their mouth to see if there's any type of deviation of the tongue that may cause some slurred speech. And that would also be our, our uh, cranial nerves uh, <clears throat> 9 and 12. Our accessory muscle, uh, our accessory nerve, cranial nerve uh, 11. We'd have them type of do a shoulder shrug or as we go down we're going to deploy the, the pulse motor and sensory to the upper and lower extremities. Now the cranial nerve 10, you know, basically that's a gag reflex that we can check and if, if, if we see any kind of uh, vagal type of response in bradycardia, uh, that might be some pressure on the, the cranial nerve 10. So we did the, the orientation, we did our pupils, we did our facial symmetry, we did the tongue, we did the gross hearing. And keep in mind, if this is a trauma patient, then you're looking for the raccoonized battle signs, outer real, rhino real, and the CSF fluid. But if it's a medical patient, we're coming down and we're paying attention to any type of uh, odor to breath in case any women out any other uh, abnormality that could be caused by some other medical or metabolic condition causing the altered mental status. <clears throat> As we come down to the upper extremities, Again, we cross our hands over and have them grip, test the grip strength by squeezing my hands as tightly as you can. Have them release. We're gonna test their sensory by telling them which side am I touching, which side am I touching, which side am I touching now, how about now, and you're not touching anything, they should say no. We can actually have also check the pulses on both sides of the radio pulse. We can have them lift their arms above their head. We can have them lift their arms straight out, palms upward, and have them close their eyes to see if there's any pronate or drift where the arms drift to one side for weakness lateralizing, indicating some kind of neurological insult. So we come down and test the distal <clears throat> and lower extremities. Now we're going to check distal pulses. This would be dorsalis pedis. 
uh, and then on the inside, we're checking the posterior tibialis, and we check the capillary refill, and we stroke the heel of the foot up to the toe to look for a probinsky or panion of the feet, and we test both sides. We can go ahead and test the sensory now, and go ahead and test right side, uh, <coughs> left side, and that's the reason why you cross so that you can keep an idea of what side is the deficit on. And then you can go ahead and ask them to uh, wiggle their toes and see if they can move them. We can also test the gross motor strength by having them try to lift up their thigh here. Go ahead and lift up your thigh as high as you can. Good. Go ahead and lift up your thigh as high as you can. Okay. And then we can have them push down on the toes and pull back up on their toes when we're doing our, our neurological exam.